Welcome to another fantastic Friday. My name is Sean Humphrey and we have a jam packed show. Four pieces of content for you. We'll send it to Macy Goldfarb with what's going on. But first, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. What's going on, Wildcats? Macy Goldfarb here with just a couple announcements. Tonight we have girls basketball and girls soccer senior night at 6 and 6.30 p.m. And if you want to support the senior class, you can come out to Blaze Pizza in Vieira from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. That's all from me. Back to you, Sean. Thanks, Macy. And welcome back for the new year, the notorious Friday Not Live. Everywhere you look, there's a heart, a hand to hold on to. Everywhere you look, there's a face, somebody who needs you. Hi, welcome back to FNL. I'm Gracie Morvecki, and I'd like to welcome my new co-host. Robbie Benezra. Today we're going to be doing dramatic readings of my favorite book. And my favorite book as well! <laughs> Alright, now on to the skit. I just got a question. What are those? <laughs> Hurricane Katrina. More like Hurricane Tortilla. And they ask you how are you and you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine. But you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Zach, stop. Zach, stop. You're gonna get in trouble, Zach. Wah, wah, ka. Lipstick in my bag. Valentino white bag. Ah! Stop! I could have dropped my croissant! Iridocyclicless. Click, <laughs> don't, don't. On all levels, except physical, I am a I love it. Thank you for tuning in for another edition of FNL. I'm Gracie Morvecki. And I'm Ryan Benezra. FNL, signing off. I personally would like to say that Robbie Benezra is 10 times better than Rosalind Rodriguez, but we'll send it to Jacob Kent with Sideline Sports. Hey Wildcats, Jacob Kent here with another edition of Sideline Sports. I'm out here with our boys soccer team on a cold senior night. We had a phenomenal game against Coco. We mercy ruled them 8-0 to just after halftime with one of our star seniors, Ian Lane, leading with four goals. Alright, I'm here with all our seniors, so we're just going to run through our favorite memories from uh, their soccer season. So, um, we're going to start off with Chase. <laughs> State champs. Alright, Robbie? I enjoyed the uh, dinners and going to Jason's Deli. I enjoyed playing alongside my brother for a couple years. Probably beating Vera and throwing a backflip after. Uh, on the state run in front of all the fans at home, that was gave me goosebumps. Um, team dinners. Team dinners. Uh, yeah, all of our team dinners and school bus rides. All right, thank you guys. Thanks for watching, Wildcats. Tune in next week for more Sideline Sports. Senior night was an absolute blast. But now, welcome back, Wildcat Cooking.
In addition to our main three shows, we've got a feature from Erin O'Brien on Dance for a Cure. For the 11th consecutive year, the Perfections Dance Team played a crucial role at Dance for a Cure, an event that draws thousands of people and hundreds of dancers each year. It takes a lot of time and a lot of attention to detail because there are a lot of dancers, a lot of tickets that have to be sold, a lot of organization. The schedule of the order of the dances is probably the one thing that takes the most time and we have to be the most meticulous about. For the past few months, I've kind of been um, preparing for the event. A lot of what I've done is um, contacted coaches, and I've been in conversation with them since probably October. Um, you know, they always have special requests for how many teams they're going to bring and how long the dances are, if they have any special information that goes with it. This event has come such a long way in 11 years, from the tiny gymnasium at West Shore to Florida Tech's gymnasium with over hundreds of dancers and thousands of people coming and the thousands and thousands of dollars that we have raised over the years. It just warms my heart when my dancers step up to do this. Since its founding, Dance for a Cure has raised almost $60,000 for breast cancer research. This has been Erin O'Brien reporting for WCTZ News. That just about does it for another week here at WCTZ News. For Macy Goldfarb, I'm Sean Humphrey. We'll see you next time. Oh, hey.